Hey guys, Todd Iwan here, and I'm here, well, sorry, I'm in the pilot world, but, long term canon, so, here for stuff for the rest of the planet, and change the result of the canon. But anyway, we are going to talk about a theory of how, or, this game. Let's see, most people will say it was the only episodic. Okay, sure, fine, I'll give you that, it seems that way. But when you look deeper into it, and you see how they treat mods like full of scale mods, you say, okay, in this way. And because there's one little thing no one's brought up. And it's, it's Digimon reference book. Well, or a ferocious Digimon. A ferocious Digimon. A mod runs an evil heart. Hidden within Gamon was unleashed. And rejects interference from those around it, and is only interested in fighting. And once it catches an opponent that held in his sight, it will not stop attacking him, not stop attacking them until they breathe their last breath. It puts up versus battles where it attacks regardless of whether limbs get broken. Now, that's a bit strange. Look at Balls Gamon and Ghost King. He basically stops if, well, Kill forces him to. But if you notice the reference book, then he really shouldn't. This makes me have a very big thought process. As this for why he does. Let's look at how it being appears. Besides the black digital arm, then I don't know what those mean, but look at how it appears. Because when Commandermon basically was there, he killed him, yeah, of course. But going further into that, that, that extreme emotion, anger, desperation, all of that, where he could die, he could die, all of them, he appeared and basically killed Commandermon. Showed off how powerful he was. But why? If he's really that strong in that, Determine why would he feel the need to show his power and not just kill him all right there, there, there. Especially here, there's always going to be an interference. Next time was with our Kenimon. Everyone was shocked. No one could technically digital for some reason. They might have been able to, but based on what was happening, they probably couldn't. That's some hopes. But then when you look at this, Ghost Kenimon appeared. Why? He even was nice to a hero. But why? He could have just like killed hero right then and there. Then when we go farther, his third appearance. Let's point out that one. Again, hero basically out of the picture, can't do you follow. So, heck, just hero out of the like no tomorrow, not the time to help them. Did you them? To draw Diamond, and Ruri, really, basically is, well, trapped, trapped as Scarf 2. But then we look at this. He basically kills the Azeron that did that to Hero, and he drained each of those one's colors. Yet, he even starts calling Hero, Bro, and he. That then leads to his fourth appearance, where, okay, we're in the mega stage of the show, and we have ultimates. That just randomly appear? Okay, possible, always gonna be possible, yeah, yeah. But when you look farther into it, why would he suddenly disappear as an ultimate? Okay, can't wait for that ran out of the ability to do anything. And then we hit the part where her, well, and Gormon was out of energy. I had a little more time. And, well, Dynamon's smart enough, they didn't really use her because this gives you out maybe out. But actually not even able to do anything because he was in Shonen Gekamon. But why? Why did he appear then? And not go on the other side with the Mega Digimon, the Glyphmon, or any of the others. I have a very big idea on why. If you know about emotional abuse, manipulation, so many types of Toxic relationships basically evil heart. 
what does that tie into it? Well, let's look at it like this. With Glowski on, he's playing the long game. If you look at this, if he really wanted to, he could just kill them all. But why hasn't he? One big solution, a big answer to that, he needs here alive and sync up with him to Digiball. That then comes out to, well, the next part, Regolus Mon. An evil dragon Digimon that intends to rule through rage and fear. Despite being perfect level, or in the Iron Man speaker, an ultimate level, it boasts a power that is reminiscent of Megidron, one of the four great giant Digimon who is considered to be the most evil. So the coolest ones are always nothing but a disaster. And if you've seen Tamers, I'm pretty sure you know that the Megatron are appear from, from Takato's anger and one of breath and revenge, that can't go so well. The digital world started basically collapsing along with the real world at that point. But that goes into farther question. As I get into it more, its body is a source of infection known as GRB, Golis Rounder, and it said that it's not affected with GRB factor, have their personalities altered and become frenzied. However, the Fetchin has not been confirmed in Digimon that have had the secretion like Digimon, which is said to be the primary cause of Digimon current black mixed in with them. Okay, we've seen Black Grandma, Black Argomon, Black Argomon, Black Argomon. But, only when he appears. And if you look at Gammon and his normal low distribution versus Golis, RGB, basically an added color meal, basically it adds on. But then you hit Golis, magenta, black, he basically has a cyan, and he has yellow. All the colors of CYMK, basically a color wheel that's attractive, takes away color. But that leads into something. All the other illusions, same power level as what would be normal. A golem. He is on par with an ultimate so far. We don't know about Mega, but ultimate so far he is. Then when we look at it, it's surprising. And does he have basically take the color, subtract it from other Digimon? Something we've never really seen before. And, well, if you look at both Realm Burst, or GRB, basically replace the area of R and G, and you get RGB. And it's honestly very strange. But now, why would that matter so much if we look at it? Why would it? Maybe you want to go on a full sword? Okay, maybe. But, then we hit Arc Truce Mon. At a mega level, the technical evolution mega form of the Golos Mon and Golos Gamar. But that brings up, like this guy, a Phantom Digimon that is said to have evolved by concentrating dark, evil energy to its utmost limit. And he studied by a certain Digimon that produces the, the secretion of GRB factor, called Realm Burst factor, I just found that it theoretically evolved or evolved when a simulation was conducted in which a large amount of GRB factor were injected into the very new Digimon that produces it their own limit. Although the simulation was repeated a hundred times, all the simulations result were now evolved into this Digimon. But it is dated in favor that it is a design that can manifest even the real digital world on its conditions are met. It's unknown what sort of even call RG it has, but since the level of dark energy measured in the solution was by far the highest among design that have currently been discovered, it is conjectured when this digital are manifest that will generate digital hazard, a digital hazard that drastically alters the environment of the digital world is predicted and 
Hold on one second. Okay. You hit some water before I came here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I know I'm still having a scratchy throat. Anyway. Hey. It's freaking. Basically, basically, generating data has a and it actually alters the environment, the digital world. But then, why? Why all this? Okay, if he's wanting to get there, why does he need Hero? Well, think about it. Hero can basically evolve Gamar. Goalist? Well, when we look at it, he randomly appears first at any moment. Do look farther into it? Why? But it's not even so random. He's playing a long game. He's trying to make Hero dependent on him. He's trying to make each of them dependent. Know that he could probably be the only one that could save them. Meaning Hero would have to sync up with him. If there's a basically a billion bad dead mon that can always want a serious mon can't handle at the moment. But why? Well, if they're depending on him, he'll start appearing more. He'll start being able to eventually think up with Hero. And, well, get what you want. He is trying to manipulate them. Basically, make them depending on him. Make them need him. But in order to do that, he needs to, quote unquote, have their trust. But for that, he needs to know when to appear. He does. He doesn't want it. It's usually the last this choice that they would never choose. One where basically he saves them. And that leads farther into basically trying to make them dependent. Very toxic nature of that. And it's something that, oh, well, is never a good thing. It leads to a lot of, well, essentially, it leads to him becoming more apparent, more there, until Hero will sync up with them and allow him to digivolve. But why? Hero is so altruistic. Why would he do that? Well, think about it. That altruism, look at what it did to some days who helped him. One specific, I can't remember the name right now. Well, one of the side of space, and then Gormon was able to say, hey, can you let them go? Well, he let them all go, and it was best to. But then we can do this. That's the case. Look farther. If Hero's altruism can be a problem for some, it can be a problem for him. We've seen versus himself before because one, he can even die. We've seen it many times, like with Optimar. And when we get that far, look at it like this. Golos Gamon is trying to manipulate the whole group, especially Hero, into relying on him. To the point, Hero's altruism will basically just make him and force him to sync up with Gaulus for a very dangerous situation. So when we look at all these episodic episodes, they're in a very long line of, well, arcing support. Like we saw which one, or no. The original Digimon they befriended, Pop Digimon, Pop Mon, was there and helped save them. Then we look farther. My mom's honestly touching around. Walkmore never went away, and he's now on their side. We have quite a few, like, okay, Ultimate. We were only at the Ultimate stage, and we met Paimon, a mega level. No one could do anything, but when it happened, basically Rui herself was able to beat him. So when we look so far into it, it may just be overreaching, but when you look at it, Close Gamma is pretty smart. He basically is playing a game of chess and calculating each move our heroes make. When we go into that, well, he's finding a way to hit them in a checkmate and win. That's where some things are going to happen. How do we prevent that? I'm not sure. How will that go? I'm not sure. When we look farther into it, so far, we can basically see Golos Gamar, not quote unquote, is just not a good person. He's manipulating, he's toxic, 
He wants to make them dependent, but he can get what he wants. He doesn't care what they want. He's just manipulating them. And he knows if he gets rid of Hero, he can't physical. If that happens, he can't get stronger. So that there lies in why? Why does he play this all the time? All for what he wants. It's manipulation. He's making them dependent and makes them need him. They make them him need him so he gets what he wants without them realizing how bad of a thing that will be. Well, that's all I can really say. And it makes a ton of sense. Why else would he have care so sparsely but save them but I like such a big villain. Someone that isn't going really to stop hit by hero. It's because he's manipulating them. He's making them dependent. That's all I really got to say. Have a good day, guys. See you later. It's out.